This episode brought to you by Skillshare. Classes taught by expert practitioners for your career or for your passion. Critic? Yeah? Could you tell me what's up with the sign on our front door? What sign? What sign? You mean the one at the end of your finger? Yes, the one at the end of my finger. Well, tell me this, Malcolm. Why do people watch sci-fi and fantasy films? <sighs> to experience new worlds, creatures, and ideas? Exactly! What's the best way to make people feel like they're experiencing that? Write interesting characters to draw them in? Nope! Write boring blank slates who go WOW to everything! That doesn't sound right. Malcolm, of course it doesn't sound right. But for some reason, young people never get tired of it. You see, there's a very distinct formula to this. Young person feels like outcast. Supernatural threat comes along. Supernatural hero comes along to help save and teach the young person that... Let me guess. That what made them an outcast is what ultimately will help them save the day. Exactly! You know the drill! But don't you think people are sick to death of that by now? One would think, but it's still going strong! Darkest Minds, Wrinkle in Time, Jupiter Ascending, Tim Burton movie you forgot you saw! But why can't the young person be a little more deep or complex? Because then the viewer can't imagine themselves as that young person! I, I don't think I follow this at all. Watch and learn, my friend. New recruits! How? Nay! Franchise! Neo, The Matrix, Jubilee, X-Men, Aragon, The Inheritance Cycle, Harry Potter, Harry Potter. Oh, we like saying our names twice, Stutter Potter? No, sir! Right! Now I know some people who think you should be written deep and complex. But that's not how we do things here, is it? Sir, sir no, no, sir! No, you are to be average, common. So when the actual cool things arrive, it'll look a lot more cool by comparison. But how could we do that when we're such outcasts? Yeah. We're just beautiful people with incredibly unique talents. We'll never fit in. That's the kind of angst audiences want to tap into. Anywhere else you'd be the coolest person around. But you still have to be misunderstood to tap into the viewer's insecurities. Stutter Potter, what's your catchphrase? I don't have one. I don't have one. I don't have one. I don't have one. How can you expect to reflect the audience when you have nothing kind of cool to say? Oh, I'm so sorry. I'll try to come up with something really cool. I didn't say really cool. I said kind of cool. The really cool stuff is going to be the weird things you come across later and you do not want to upstage them. Neo, what's your catchphrase? <clears throat> Whoa. You see? Any impressionable high schooler can remember that. And sometimes we really want to show our cards as to how hard we want to hit a demographic. Jubilee, show them how it's done! Does a mall babe eat chili fries? Does a mall babe eat chili fries? Does a mall babe eat chili fries? That's the kind of pandering we're looking to utilize here! Learn from Jubilee! With that kind of bland dialogue, she's sure to be nobody's favorite character! Now, you will be the most lazy, run-of-the-mill protagonist, so you can make your lazy, run-of-the-mill fantasy world seem all the more whimsical. H how Give me 20 laughs, Potter! I... I... 20 laughs! By watching Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief. The 2010 film, based on the young adult series, was not a huge hit domestically, but in the foreign market brought in a pretty penny. While I can't speak for the book series, it is very clear that the movie was trying to cash in on the wide-eyed youth being tossed into a whimsical world of both wonder and threat. The downside is, while many movies have used this formula to death, they often add something to make it enjoyably unique. This, even despite having Sorcerer Stone director Chris Columbus, feels like a dollar store coloring book trying to be a popular thing but as flat as the toilet paper it's printed on. It uses the same formula a lot of movies of its kind do, with little charm or variation added to it. Thus, we're gonna break down this formula because if they can make a profit with such tired storytelling cliches, why can't we? So I trust you're taking notes on how to bang these movies out as quickly as possible. <sighs> This is... Oh, 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 
I just did 20 laps around the building. Jubilee. He means 20 laps around the neighborhood property line. What? Did he make you do that before? No, I just know what he means. Good instincts, Jubilee. This is Percy Jackson. We open with the jolly green Aquaman coming out of the sea and taking to the streets. I can already see how the gods have kept themselves a secret for so long. Hey cool, Poseidon's powers include windbreaker manufacturing, that'll be fun to explore! He talks with Zeus, though seeing how he's played by Sean Bean, he should probably be the god of death. As we partake in the first of our wowed youngsters cliches, secret important talks before the main character is introduced. No lightning. Stolen. Apparently Zeus's lightning has been stolen and he thinks Poseidon's son is the culprit. If your son is the thief, I will send him to the depths of Tartarus. You know, it's a shame the gods decided not to be a part of our world for no reason. We could have shown them security cameras, alarm systems, things that could prove who really committed a crime instead of just flat out guessing. But wouldn't the reveal of their secret world be less wowish? Woe-ish, even. Yes, indeed, Aragon. Logic can be cast aside if tropes we've seen a million times can be exploited. Nice one, bro. <laughs> Zeus says Poseidon has 14 days to return what he's stolen or there will be war. Hey, remember when Earth went two weeks without lightning and nobody noticed? Fun times. As the credits roll, we see Percy Jackson, played by Logan Lerman, holding his breath for seven minutes while his best friend Grover, played by Brandon T. Jackson, cheers him on. Oh, I wish I could spend all day in the water instead of this place. Right? It's like high school without the musical. That's how kids talk. It's like high school without the musical. So, high school. Which it's not like it is. No part of that analogy adds up! Percy has trouble reading in class, so his doctor diagnoses him with dyslexia. It's funny, I have slight dyslexia, which means I see words and sentences in the wrong place. I've yet to hear one where the letters do a chorus line like Dick Van Dyke's credit at the end of Mary Poppins. An eye doctor might ask a few follow-up questions hearing that. Hey mom, I'm home. I'm up here, honey. Does she own that whole building? In New York, a box is a million dollars rent. How is she up here, honey, in this building? Were the hallway doors open so he could hear her on the third floor? And why wouldn't she be up there if they didn't live on that floor? Damn, I don't know what prints you're ironing clothes for, but he gives you good tips. But someday it'll all make sense. Really? When? Tonight? Tomorrow? When? So Percy says both his dyslexia and ADHD seem to be getting worse. You know, I thought this school was supposed to make things better. I mean, point to one other kid. Any other kid in this day and age who has ADHD, dyslexia, or both. I can't focus enough to read that. Need an underdeveloped Italian asshole archetype? I cast Joe Patigliano before he even finished that sentence. Where's my beer? Yeah, real charming you got there. This is my house. You show some respect. Oh, if only his literal godfather could see how well I'm raising him. Stand back, Mary. I'm the big deal around here. He sleeps till noon every day and he can't even hold a job. Why do you stay with him? I told you, sex. What, do I have to spell it out for you? Oh, that's right, I can't. Sorry. Oh, is this the part where the good guy looks like the bad guy and the bad guy looks like the good guy? Well, let's see if this movie's hack neat enough to do the disappearing behind the car trick. Oh, come, come on, on, come on, on, do come on. It. disappear behind the car, do disappear it. behind do the car, it. do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, Well done. Critic, I found this sad kid outside having an asthma attack. Oh. Ponder, you're behind. Look off Neo's notes. <laughs> Don't you see this as cruel and unusual punishment? Actually, for me, it's cruel and quite common punishment. Huh. <laughs> the kids go to a field trip to a museum where they're studying, what else? Greek mythology. Taught by Piers Brosnan dressed as, I don't know, most actors trying to get an Oscar. Now over here, we have a depiction of Hercules defeating the Nemean lion. Hercules killed the beast and took the skin as a trope. Hey, I know my Disney films. That was Scar, and it beautifully traumatized a lot of three-year-olds. The substitute teacher asked to speak with Percy, and that escalated quickly. You stole the lightning bolt. I don't know what you're talking about. Give it to me. <laughs> you see, if school was like this, I'd pay attention more. This looks like a job for crutches and a wheelchair. Take this to defend yourself 
It's a powerful weapon. This is a pen. A vape pen so people will think you're pretentious and stay away from you. Sally! Oh, More beer! That's my thing! Beer! My whole role on Sopranos was shit compared to this complexity! You bald-headed freak. So Super Grover steps into action and tells his mother that they need to go. Look, what is happening? I didn't steal anything. Where are you taking me? What is this camp? Is it me or is this little shit always pissed off? What are you talking about? Mom, 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 mom. Why did he have to go? Are you kidding? These special people, what? Hey, hey. Maybe you're not seeing what I'm seeing. We gotta talk, okay? Where are you taking me? What is this camp? What is this, a car? We're in a car. Cars are dumb. But others have a beef with Percy. Grover reveals he's half goat, and he gets Percy to the camp where he can actually read the lettering. There, duplicate that wow face. Duplicate that wow face. Wow. 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 Golly. Wow. More whimsy, Potter. Wow. 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 But the mother can't cross because it's half bloods only. Use Potter's pen and click it! Ah yes, the pen is mightier than the sword. Is the sword! That also works! Percy's mother is killed, but Percy does manage to kill the monster with his own horn before passing out. Ah, now let's see you're waking up with your wounds mended in a mysterious place of help face. Okay, I may actually need a hospital. Here's some band-aids! All of it was real. My mom's gone. Wow. That was quite the underplayed reaction to his mother being dead. All of it was real. My mom's gone. Oh man, she had my switch. Dumb. Yep. You're a demigod. Two points for Percy Jackson. <laughs> I have to act excited because the rest of this movie clearly isn't. I think you have the wrong guy. I'm not a hero. I'm a loser. I have dyslexia, ADHD. You what? Aw, oh, man! I didn't know that, Christ! I was gonna go with the kid who ate his own dandruff when looking at girls. Or the one who fights people on Twitter if you don't say Star Wars is a real religion. Or the one who hears the devil screaming burn anything with lips seven times a day. But you have dyslexia and ADHD? Get your loser ass away from me, you disgusting piece of shit! Piece of shit! So even with his incredible handicap, Percy is convinced by Grover that he can train with the other demigods. What's her name? <laughs> what a beautiful name. He also discovers Pierce Brosnan is a centaur. And I dare say he looks weirdly the most comfortable in this role since he played James Bond. In my world, I'm known as Chiron. You have a real horse's ass. Okay, so the crutch is hiding the goat legs is actually pretty clever. Because you can go back and see that his bent legs are still there. You can buy it. How the hell did he hide horse legs in a goddamn wheelchair? Maybe Poseidon's clothes making powers put together a magic blanket that could conceal his legs. Or it's just dumb. It's dumb. Why didn't anybody tell me? It was for your own safety. Yeah, demigods can rarely protect themselves. You're very powerful. A threat. Once again, why you needed to be protected. It made more sense if you didn't know how to use your amazing powers to defend yourself, because, you know, Goat Boy was there. That was good. That was enough. That's why your mother married your stepfather. His pungent odor masked the smell of your blood. There's no sewage factories you couldn't move near? You had to be in an abusive relationship for that? How do you dummy gods not stab yourselves when you get up in the morning? My mother put up with that creep to protect me? She was pretty stupid, yes. She sacrificed so much for me. Now she's gone. You know, I can't tell if every take in this is the first or the last, but it's definitely one of them. He either doesn't have the emotion figured so he's still feeling it out, or he's just done doing so many takes that he just bitterly gives up on the last one. Look, I didn't steal it. This is your problem, all right? Not mine. This is about your world, not mine. This is like take 80. Are you really gonna do take 81? Dumb! 
Not that Brosnan is doing much better selling the end of the world. Olympians would be forced to choose sides. Earth would become a battleground. Mountains erupted, earthquakes, raging fires. No, really, it's like super bad and stuff. The last time me and Greece were involved in such terror, I was singing in Mamma Mia. So they tried to train Percy before taking him to Zeus to prove his innocence. This is Percy Jackson. And he's gonna need a team. Jesus, her eyes are gonna pop out and bite me. Crazy Eyes has less crazy eyes. We'll take him. I'm Luke, son of Hermes and camp leader. Everyone in position for capture the flag. Why do I feel like this will be red versus blue, but unintentionally funny? I'm coming, buddy, I'm coming. Sons of berries, watch out. Whoa, that's a sword, that's a sword. No, I figure if I just say things I see, that counts as comedy. That's a sword, that's a sword. That's a tree, that's a tree. That's another young adult movie I'm not putting on my resume. Oh, you guys take camp way too seriously. Go! Christ, it's just capture the flag. What was Eddie Redmayne, your coach? Go! <laughs> Now this is a good time to talk about your training faces. Oh, is that when we're all like, wow, I'm having so much fun. But this is a lot harder than I thought it would be. Exactly, you've all done this a million times, so let's see those phoned in faces. Potter, are you cheating off Neo's face? No, sir, I wasn't. Yes, he was, I saw him. Percy finds the flag the same time <laughs> does. My mother is goddess of wisdom and battle strategy. I always win. Okay, you are always somewhere in between Reagan and Pazuzu from The Exorcist. <laughs> she whoops his ass, but the voice of his father gives him advice. Go to the water. Drown yourself, you're pathetic. He finds the water, heals him, and gives him super strength. Yay, I learned nothing, cheated my way to victory, and got rewarded for it. Now this is a hero's journey we can all learn from. Yep, that's what happens to the loser team. Grab a plate. But a knight on Dull Mountain appears, interrupting their celebration. Percy Jackson, show yourself. She's right here. Percy Jackson, bring me the bolt. It turns out this is Hades who's demanding the lightning bolt be handed over to him in exchange for his mother being released from the underworld. This is something I have to do on my own. Yeah, well, we weren't asking for your permission. Come on. Today, you tried to kill me. Now you want to defend me? Blow. They decide they need help, though, so they go to Luke, who helped him out earlier. Get away from all that renaissance fair stuff out there, you know? Funny how they're aware of games with guns, but no actual guns are ever utilized in this universe. No, no, swords and shields, that's what's needed for the dangers of the real world. Hey, kid, nice armor that doesn't cover everything. Welcome to the modern world. What are you guys up to? We're going to get my mom back. Ooh. You like my obvious bad guy going to betray you demeanor? How about this painfully unsubtle foreshadowing as to why? My dad's a jerk. I've never met him. Guess we all got daddy issues, huh? That's because all gods are the same. Selfish. They only care about themselves. People at Murder Mystery Weekends reveal less about themselves than you. But he's giving them pee-wing shoes. He can't possibly be the villain, right? You see my dad on the highway to hell? Kick his ass for me. Now this is especially interesting because... Critic? Oh no. Were you looking to go on an adventure even though you'd get in trouble for it? Yes. Well then you're following the exact protocol of the wowed youngsters. Really? Were you planning to screw up along the way? Yes! Was there going to be a very obvious betrayal that for some reason still surprised you? Yes! No. Was there going to be a moment when all hope looked gone, but suddenly your confidence saved the day? Yes! Then much like Percy Jackson, you're on your way to be the most wowed youngsters who ever lived! <laughs> you're all insane. Come here, you! Come here, come here!
You know, after years of secretly flirting, I'm glad we could finally confess our love to each other, Doug. Oh, Doug, it only makes sense that you finally confess your love to the person who means the most to you. Doug, you're the most special person in the world. Doug, 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 Doug. I would like to sing a song that I wrote for you, Doug, if that's okay. Oh, Doug, that would be splendid. It's called Doug. Doug, 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 Doug. 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 Here I go, Doug. <clears throat> Yup, that was me, long before I could music. But thankfully, I found out a lot more about music by using Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes covering dozens of creative and entrepreneurial skills. Whether you want to fuel your curiosity, creativity, or even career, Skillshare is the perfect place to keep you learning and thriving. I mean, as you can tell, my singing is pretty good, but it could use a little bit of work. Oh no! But Skillshare has a wide range of musical classes that can teach you how to music so much better. Whether it's singing, playing an instrument, or even writing music, Skillshare has got you covered. Premium membership gives you unlimited access, so you can join the classes and communities that are just right for you. Skillshare is also incredibly affordable, especially when compared to pricey in-person classes and workshops. An annual subscription is less than $10 a month. $10 a month to sound better than this. Horses. And because Skillshare is sponsoring this video, you can sign up with this link in the description to get a two-month free trial. That's right, just go to this link in the description and you can get a two-month free trial so you can improve whatever skills you want to brush up on, and you can go from this to this. Oh, Doug, that was absolutely lovely. Thank you, Skillshare. Oh, Doug. Doug, 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 Doug. You know what, I'm done with it. Whatever your interest, Skillshare has got you covered. Go to the link in the description to get your two-month free trial today. Want to see us in the Chicagoland area? Well, Saturday, June 29th, we're going to be at Hollywood Palms for Walter Benaziak's cinematic opus, The Infinity Trinity. Doors open at 6, there will be a meet and greet beforehand, signing autographs, taking pictures. The screening starts at 7, and there'll be a Q&A to follow. You can get more information as well as seeing the trailer by checking out the link in the description. And you can see me at Salt City Con in New York, July 6th to the 7th. Hopefully, we'll see you all there. searching for three pearls spread around the United States which will allow them to leave the underworld after they save Percy's mom. The first seems to be at a garden emporium. Look at this. Nice. Monster! Now people will lose their wishes! They notice a bunch of statues in the style of scared shitless and a woman running away from something evil. You can guess where this is going, Medusa. A monstrous hell beast whose terrifying stare turns people to stone. Well, this is a fabulous surprise. Or Uma Thurman unable to shower the Batman and Robin off of her. I was courted, desired by many suitors. Yeah, how big of a letdown is that? Not that it's Uma Thurman, but that it's just her. She has the snake hair, okay, standard. But look at all these designs that people have done over the years. You could really have fun with a modern day Medusa with modern day technology, and it's just a normal person with snake hair. Look at this dumb idiot. She knows not to look, but for some reason she does. So rude, not looking people in the eye. Well, she makes a good argument. I mean, the snakes do sound comforting. Oh, you got me. Tell my husband I died from idiocy. Who's that? Another demigod. What do you think the direction was for that? Now, Uma, act like you've been drunk for hours and then suddenly you realize you have to pee. The Olympians come to life! So it looks like... <laughs> can't get her hand free, but Grover cuts off the arm and... That shouldn't have loosened her grip, but movie needs to movie, so off we go. How do they take out one of the most famous mythical villains of all time? Like a bitch. <gasps> she was so pathetic, it almost seemed mean to cut her head off. Now, writers, millions of dollars are being put into this movie. I really want you to take your time and think of a good line he can say after killing her. Heads up. Or, go with something your two-year-old would say, that works too. 
They find the location of the next pearl as well as discovering they're on the news. When I woke up, Sally was gone. She was kidnapped by Percy. She would oh, never shut up, Gabe. That. Yeah, we don't need information about how close they are to finding us. Or close curtains when there's a decapitated head in our room. Did none of them attend dumbass studies when they were training all those years? The next pearl seems to be on the crown of a statue, but they need to get past the cleaning crew first. Oh. Ah. Ah. Not dead, they're unconscious. Bullshit, that dude is dead or all kinds of broken. Bottom line, he's never having children. They use the flying shoes to get the pearl, but they're suddenly ambushed. We've been expecting you, Mr. Jackson. Was there another instance where a gang of janitors threatened you in unison? They morph into a hydra and start attacking our heroes by, I guess, intimidating means. So fire is now a mosquito bite. Oh look! Good. They use Medusa's head to turn fire into stone. Movie, if you don't know why that's stupid, I'm not gonna tell you. As they discover the location to the next and final pearl is in Vegas. We got poker, we got blackjack. Grover. We're not here to have fun. Oh, it's the catchphrase they put on every poster. Why, hello, siren-looking sirens. Thank God we know nothing about sirens. Guys, why don't we stay here for a while? Yeah! Okay. Okay, so this is actually a very clever part of the movie. Biting the lotus alters their mind, so they want to stay in the casino and party forever. There's even a guy who admits to being there since the 70s. This year, 1971. This is not only a great update to the Lotus Eater thread in Greek mythology, but it's a great commentary on gambling addiction, drug addiction, honestly, just addiction in general. They're even shocked to discover they've been there for days, even though it just feels like three hours. Today's the 15th. No, tomorrow is the 21st. We were in there for five days. Had the rest of the movie been this clever, it honestly would have turned out pretty awesome. But instead, we're given a bunch of shit that doesn't make sense. Like the pearl is one of the marbles on the spinning wheel. There. It's like having the deed to your house be what you wipe your ass with in the bathroom. It just doesn't seem like a good spot for it. Percy doesn't even wise up to the spell. He has to be told again by his father not to eat the lotus. So once again, his dad bails him out. No, Percy. Don't eat the flower. This film should be called Training Wheels the Movie. Thank God management knows to always keep the keys to their show cars in the vehicle. Because you can't shoot yourself in the foot without bullets. <laughs> They escape and drive to where the entrance to the underworld is Hollywood. Of course, Hades probably greenlit this film. They go to cross the river Styx, but the rower is not cooperative, leading to probably the funniest line in the movie. We need to see Hades. For living and not permitted here, die and come back. Trust me, this film makes it tempting. Grover tries paying him off. <sighs> it's how everyone felt when they paid money to see this flick. They finally find some currency he'll accept, and he takes them to Hades. Please give me five stars on your app. I'll try to talk less politics next time. They're approached by Persephone, played by Rosario Dawson, presumably doing time for Clerks 2. Hades is played by Steve Coogan, who I guess is kind of like James Woods' Hades if he was a street magician. Why did you come here, then? When you saw that I wasn't the thief, you'd let my mother go. You think I'm an idiot? I'm Hades! They discover the lightning is in the shield as his mother is handed over, figuring out it was Luke who used them. What, that bundle of no motives? <laughs> Persephone betrays Hades though and says she'll let them go with the pearls, but they only have three and there's four of them. Math was also not taught in demigod training. I'm staying because I'm the protector. Rover, come on, just go. It's my duty. I won't come back for you. Wow, that took like no convincing. No, I- All right, let's go. It's the friendships that keep me invested. On second thought, what's even the downside? He has an eternity bonking Rosario Dawson! Boo friggity who! <laughs> if she doesn't get your go face, nothing will. They beam to the Empire State Building where Luke is there ready to finish them off. But they sadly don't go out so easily. <laughs> She just kicked his ass, why wouldn't she be okay? Of course it comes down to one-on-one -on -one as Percy seems to be beaten. A shame he can't control water on this stormy night. If only Manhattan was surrounded by the clear liquid, or most of the human body is made up of water. Everyone's dumb in this! 
Percy uses the water towers around him to surround Luke, who just stands there letting him do it. He smashes the water into him, presumably electrocuting him, seeing how water and lightning don't mix, or he's fine. Electricity and fire are playful sunburns in this world. Percy grabs the bolt and returns it to Olympus to stop the gods from going to war. All seems well, but Percy, still feeling inadequate, talks with his father for the first time. You don't have much time. How old was I when you left? You were just saw the plus sign on the pregnancy test old. That's why he passed the law preventing gods from ever having contact with their children. But I was always watching over you. Oh, that reminds me. Malcolm, get in here! What now? Well, we're at the part where the wowed youngsters are feeling hopeless, so we gotta give them a motivational speech. But they've barely done anything. How do you know they need to be motivated? Hey, hands up those who don't have their real parents! Yeah, see. Fine. Now, we're running short on time, so I'll give the speech to these two, and you give the speech to those two. Wait, won't it vary because of the different things they've been through? Please. I know you always saw yourself as a loser, but you are more than you think. There's a whole world you didn't know existed. It's about to turn to chaos, and you're the key to bring back balance. But how? I'm just a nobody. There's nothing special about me. Don't you know, Jubilee and Aragon? You're not just special like us. You're the most special one of all. You're Wizard Harry. Wow! You're a dragon rider, Aragon. Wow. You're the one, Mio. Interesting. And you're... gonna stand next to the coolest X-Men a lot, Jubilee. What? Oh, yeah, they can't all be home runs. Just feel thankful that you got cameos in the Singer films and go out there and win! Well, that's all the motivation I need. Hey, Potter, is there something on my finger? No. Ah! So Percy discovers it was forbidden for Poseidon to communicate with him over the years. Apart from the constant mental phone calls in his head, explain that one. And Percy goes back a hero despite the fact that he honestly didn't do that much. He even gets Grover released from constant sex with Persephone. Thanks a lot, asshole. It left the camp and disobeyed my orders. But it was damn good flying. You're my favorite student. Same song, different chorus. Percy comes across... <laughs> who still refuses to tie up her hair when fighting, and it looks like they're gonna live romantic-ish together. Whoa, whoa, wait. First rule of battle strategy. Don't ever let your opponent distract you. First rule of dating, always grab a man's sword and use it against him. At least somebody's learning something. And that was Percy Jackson and the Olympians, the lightning thief. And after so much emotional turmoil, I think it only figures to make one big change. What's this? Oh Christ, did none of you see Dark Phoenix? No. 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 I'm in the X-Men. No. Basically, it means everything has come full circle. In that it absolutely hasn't at all. Percy Jackson is as phoned in a wowed youngsters movie as you can get. While I have my issues with other films that did something similar, there was at least a passion to them that indicated people wanted to make this because they had an interesting story to tell. This just feels like they're trying to score big with a formula that's popular. It's emotionally lacking, there's not much of an arc for anyone, even the creative visuals aren't all that creative. I've never read the books, but I pray they have more of an imaginative identity than what's represented here. It's not a god-awful movie, it's just standard, dull, and it's been done a million times. And you guys learned great from it. Congratulations, you all passed! Yeah! <laughs> Except for Potter, I hate him. Yeah! <laughs> and I'm happy to say, Jubilee, you passed with honors. <gasps> Whoa! Yes. This is so unexpected. <laughs> this is the greatest day of my life. Bloody hell with this traditional ending. I'm doing things my way, biatch. Ah, uh, Potter. That is exactly what I wanted you to say in order for you to graduate. Oh, piss off, wanker. Everything's coming up Harry now. I believe that's called puberty. Shut up. Whoa, what the hell? Didn't you know? 
You can't kill me. I'm a vampire. <laughs> Is that really a thing? Wow! Holy shit, it is! Comics are weird. Proceed. I'm gonna stop talking, I remember, so you don't have to. <laughs> hey, Doug Walker here. Intrepid Fallen Heroes Fund is this week's charity shout out. The Intrepid Fallen Heroes Fund builds critically needed centers for treating United States military personnel suffering the effects of traumatic brain injury and post-traumatic stress. These injuries have severely impacted the lives of hundreds of thousands of men and women who have served selflessly in defending our nation. To help address this urgent need, they're building a series of 10 specially designed treatment facilities, called Intrepid Spirit Centers, on military bases across the nation. These centers act as gymnasiums for the brain, providing service members with the most advanced care available to address the complex symptoms of TBI and PTS. Seven of these centers are open, and the eighth center is currently underway. More than 90% of patients treated in these centers are able to continue on active duty. Click on the link and see what you can do to help so many brave men and women be the most that they can be.